This is a satellite view of the ruins of the Darunta training camp near Jalalabad in Afghanistan. You can see the remnants of buildings, there's tracks of some kind on the ground, and these depressions that look like bomb craters. Darunta is one of the famous training camps in Afghanistan that have been alleged to have been used by Al-Qaeda, the terrorist group headed by Osama bin Laden that masterminded and carried out the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001 against the United States. Afghanistan is, or at, was at one time, full of camps like this. Darunta was undoubtedly real, as you can see here. Whether it was an Al-Qaeda camp is a matter of dispute. But whether it was or wasn't, we do know that it played a role in the Afghan-Soviet War of the 1980s. Osama bin Laden, the terrorist who carried out the 9-11 attacks, was also involved in that war. Allegations have been made that during the 1980s, bin Laden was funded by the United States and Western interests, and later bit the hand that fed him, so to speak, by attacking the U.S. in 2001. It's even been alleged that bin Laden was an agent or asset of the CIA. But is it true? In this video, we'll try to get to the bottom of this question. Was bin Laden funded by the United States? Hi, I'm Sean Munger. I'm a historian and I teach history courses online. You can see what I've got at my website, seanmunger.com. I've got a free webinar coming up on December 22nd called How Historical is Indiana Jones? And if you click on my courses, you'll see the courses that I'm offering. I've got one on the Vietnam War, another one about understanding Vladimir Putin, and a free course on the Pearl Harbor attack. I, of course, remember the 9-11 attacks. It's very hard to forget the events of that terrible day. I'm also old enough to remember the Soviet-Afghan War of the 1980s, which made the news on a fairly regular basis. I certainly recall grainy news footage of guys in tan-colored fatigue shooting shoulder-mounted grenades at specks in the sky that reporters told us were Russian helicopters. We did not know at that time that that image and this one were actually connected. But as many things are in history connected, there is a relationship between them. The sense of irony is almost too powerful to avoid. Particularly after World War II, in its zeal to combat the spread of world communism, the United States intervened repeatedly in numerous countries around the world, propping up repressive regimes or funding shady and morally questionable insurgencies, fighting against people who saluted red flags and whom we thought wanted to own the means of production. Zealous anti-communism was a bedrock of American foreign policy, uniting presidents from both parties across decades and the political spectrum, from Truman in the 1940s to George Bush I in the early 1990s. Then we, the United States, finally went too far. One of those shady and morally questionable insurgencies was run by this guy, Osama bin Laden, a fierce ideologue and terrorist mastermind who learned jihad in Afghanistan in the 1980s and then turned around to strike a deadly blow at the United States 15 years later. I mean, it's almost Shakespearean. The great arrogant giant brought down by its own short-sightedness. Many people take this as an item of faith, but is it really true as a matter of historical fact? In order to get to the bottom of this question, we have to unpack a couple of different subjects, all of them extremely complicated. First, what was the Afghan-Soviet War? Who was fighting who and why? Second, what was the United States' role in this conflict? Third, who was Osama bin Laden and what did he do in this war? And finally, is there any historical evidence that links American meddling in Afghanistan to bin Laden specifically and his al-Qaeda terrorist group that eventually attacked the United States in 2001? First, the Afghan-Soviet War. This is one of the most consequential conflicts of the 20th century. Therefore, it's kind of surprising that not many people know that much about it. Suffice it to say, Afghanistan, a poor country whose hinterlands are controlled by a complicated patchwork of ethnic tribes, began to descend into chaos in the 1970s. At the end of that decade, in 1978, a communist regime explicitly allied with the Soviet Union took power and immediately faced an insurgency by a bunch of tribes that didn't like the direction the country was going. 
This communist Afghan regime requested help from the Soviets, who promptly sent a bunch of troops, an invasion for all intents and purposes, designed to help prop up that regime. There are some structural similarities between this process, which happened in late 1979, and how the United States sent significant numbers of forces in the mid-1960s to prop up its preferred regime in South Vietnam. But beware, the Vietnam analogy is not a perfect graft. Anyway, the war in Afghanistan dragged on throughout the 1980s, and the Soviets, whose own country was plagued by economic stagnation and political inflexibility, could never really gain control of the situation. The Afghan rebels fighting against the communist regime and the Soviets were called the Mujahideen. If you want some more in-depth background on this process, you might want to see, believe it or not, a couple of my videos in my Bond in Context series where I analyze the historical events behind the James Bond movies. Look specifically at my video on Octopussy and then the one on The Living Daylights. In both of those videos, I talk about the background of the Afghan-Soviet war, how it started, and what was at stake. Okay, so that was the war. Now, what was the U.S. doing in this conflict? Well, the U.S., whose main foreign policy goal was to foil the Soviets at pretty much every turn, seized upon the opportunity to make life difficult for its biggest enemy. In the 1980s, large amounts of U.S. aid, some of it out in the open, but a great deal of it covert, went to fund the Mujahideen. Again, there are some similarities to the Vietnam War, in which the Soviet Union and China supplied weapons and money to the North Vietnamese who were trying to destabilize the pro-U.S. regime of South Vietnam. The thing was that the money and weapons had to be administered by somebody on the ground. It's not like you're going to drop bricks of cash out of a bomber over Kandahar. Because the United States had at least some relationship with Pakistan, Afghanistan's next-door neighbor, a government agency in Pakistan, the Inter-Services Intelligence Agency, or ISI, became basically the point person on the ground for funneling this Western aid to the Afghan Mujahideen. One thing you have to understand, though, is that the Afghan Mujahideen, or resistance, was not monolithic. It's not like there was one central group or agency making policy for the whole show. It didn't work like that. Afghanistan, as I said, is a patchwork of fabulously complicated tribal affiliations and competing political priorities. The ISI did not control the Mujahideen, and although some organizations were formed, particularly later in the conflict, to increase coordination among them, they were never under a unified command. There were actually seven major groups of Mujahideen who were more of a united front, a coalition, than an integrated entity. So that brings us to the third question. Who was Osama bin Laden and what was his involvement with all of this? Osama bin Laden at first had nothing whatsoever to do with Afghanistan. He was from Saudi Arabia. He was one of the many sons of the most important businessman in Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Laden, who was in the construction business and who was very friendly with the Saudi king. Mohammed bin Laden and his group of family-owned companies got very rich by building modern infrastructure in Saudi Arabia, particularly serving the Great Mosque at Mecca, the pilgrimage site for hundreds of millions of Muslims the world over. Mohammed bin Laden, who died in 1967, was not and never was a terrorist. Indeed, Osama was sort of the black sheep of the family, and it's a huge, huge family. And he gradually turned toward ideological and religious extremism in the 1970s. If you're interested in the history of Osama bin Laden and how he came to be a terrorist, I highly recommend this book, Lawrence Wright's The Looming Tower, Al-Qaeda, and the Road to 9-11, which won the Pulitzer Prize in 2006. It's one of the best and most readable books on this subject. For religious and political reasons, bin Laden was attracted to the idea of jihad, or holy war, a position championed by an extremist faction of radical Islam far out of the mainstream of the religion practiced by most Muslims. Bin Laden, who was developing his extremist ideology in the 1980s, saw the Afghan war against the Soviets as a means to get some street cred, so to speak, by taking part in a jihad and aiding the Afghan rebels against their imperialist oppressor, the Soviet Union. 
The fact that Osama bin Laden also viewed the United States as an imperialist impress oppressor didn't come into play yet. Bin Laden was one of several groups which were called the Arab Afghans, which is actually a misnomer. These were people, usually extremist Islamists, note Islamism is a specific form of fundamentalist Islam. Anyway, these were people who came to Afghanistan from other Arab countries to try to participate in the war for various reasons, religious, political, or economic. Again, not a perfect analogy by any means, but you might want to think of the Eagle Squadron in World War II, which was made up of Americans who were not yet at war with Germany, who voluntarily went to England to fly for the Royal Air Force against Germany in the Battle of Britain. It wasn't their war, technically, but there were various reasons why people wanted to sign up. So bin Laden did go to Pakistan early in the conflict. He seems to have been there no later than 1980, and he was raising money for the Mujahideen from the very beginning. We know that he made several trips into Afghanistan over the course of the war. He established a training camp, and he finally did get into real battle in 1987, the Battle of Jaji. That battle, for the record, was not strategically significant, but it did help establish that street cred that bin Laden desperately wanted. So this is what's important to remember. The Arab Afghans were a sideshow. They were never a significant force among combatants in Afghanistan in the 1980s. Nearly 100,000 Afghans, and I mean real Afghans, participated in the Mujahideen. By some estimates, the number of Arab Afghans was never more than about 2,000. So we're talking about a very small number. That brings us to our final question. Is there any evidence that Osama bin Laden was funded by the United States or was a CIA agent? In short, no. Furthermore, it doesn't make much sense that he would have been. For one thing, he had his own money. He was the son of one of the richest men in the world. This was well before the bin Laden family cut him off as a result of his extremism and his annoying habit of palling around with terrorists. With both the money that he had himself and as a result of businesses connected to his family and his own connections to deep-pocketed people in the Arab world who shared some of his views, bin Laden was himself a source of cash for the Mujahideen. The idea that he would have needed to go begging for American foreign aid is simply ridiculous. Secondly, he was ideologically opposed to cooperating with Americans. Even in the 1980s, he viewed the United States as a bigger geopolitical enemy than the Soviet Union. But it was the Soviets who were on the ground in Afghanistan at that time, embroiled in the war, not the Americans. The Soviet-Afghan War was a war of opportunity. One of bin Laden's chief grievances against the United States was its support for Israel. He would never have taken what he believed was tainted money, especially not when he could raise money from rich donors in the Arab world who were eager to help the Afghan cause. There is no evidence of American financial support for bin Laden. No one in the CIA or the American government has, had ever heard of bin Laden in the 1980s. There's no reason why they would have. And he was such a small potatoes operation with regard to the broader picture of the war that it wouldn't have made any sense from the American perspective to fund or to cultivate him as an asset. What would have been the point? He wasn't an Afghan, he had no power base within that country, and to the extent that he had an army of his own, they were basically tourists with guns, not likely to strike a mortal blow against the big Russian bear, which, as you recall, was the whole point for the United States. There are no documents, no accounts, nothing to connect bin Laden to the U.S., just nothing at all. And the more you know about bin Laden and his ideology, the sillier the idea gets that he would have been funded by the United States. Nevertheless, the idea did take hold after 9-11 that Americans had something to do with creating bin Laden, a, a sort of Frankenstein. Some BBC reporters asserted it in a poorly sourced story from 2004. Politicians in various countries have also suggested it, including notably Fidel Castro, not the most reliable of sources. But all of these sources are pure speculation. Not a single one of them produced any hard evidence. And those in the know, CIA personnel, for example, or others who have studied American involvement in the war, have pushed back against these conjectures. 
Finally, consider this. If bin Laden was funded by the U.S. in the 1980s, why wouldn't he have admitted it after 9-11? Bin Laden did claim responsibility for the September 11th attacks on numerous occasions. For example, in a famous videotape that he issued on the eve of the 2004 presidential election. With as much as he hated the United States, do you think he would have passed up an opportunity to thumb his nose at us and say, nanny nanny boo boo, look at you dumb Americans, you gave me money back in the 80s and I turned around and attacked you. Ha ha ha, the joke's on you. Well, he never said that. Incidentally, the reason why bin Laden masterminded the 9-11 attack was to draw the United States into a war of retaliation in Afghanistan, the lawless country where bin Laden was forced to take shelter after every other Islamic country shut their doors to him in the 1990s. Bin Laden connected the Soviets' negative experience in Afghanistan and their humiliating withdrawal in 1989 with the collapse of the Soviet empire in 1990 and 91. He thought that if he could draw the United States into a war in Afghanistan, the same thing would happen. It would bring on the collapse of the United States. Bin Laden, of course, was assassinated by American forces in Pakistan in 2011. As of the recording date of this video, we are still at war in Afghanistan 19 years after 9-11. Let me be clear though, concluding that bin Laden was not funded by the United States does not render invalid any criticism of the policy of funneling aid to the Afghan Mujahideen. Many, though by no means all, of the Afghan tribes or factions who did receive Western money from the ISI later supported the Taliban, the government that hosted and defended bin Laden until well after 9-11. And it is also true that Pakistan and elements connected with the ISI did help hide bin Laden from U.S. forces hunting him. Bin Laden was assassinated in Pakistan, having escaped there after American attacks narrowly avoided hitting him at his former hideout in Tora Bora in Afghanistan. But these are separate issues. One last point tangentially related to bin Laden folklore. In the months after 9-11, a pernicious little bit of folklore made its rounds of the internet, mostly by email forward. Supposedly, an account by U.S. Marine Corps Colonel Oliver North, who ex executed the infamous Iran-Contra arms for hostages swap under the Reagan administration in 1986, North is alleged to have told a congressional committee investigating Iran-Contra that the most dangerous man in the world was a little-known terrorist hiding in a cave in Afghanistan named Osama bin Laden, and that we would all hear from him at some time in the future. This is a complete fabrication. North never said anything of the kind. He never even heard of Osama bin Laden until the rest of us did in the late 1990s at the earliest. No such statement attributed to North appears in any record of the congressional testimony related to Iran-Contra. You can also tell it's a fabrication because it's factually inaccurate. Bin Laden did not move to Afghanistan until 1996 after he was kicked out of Sudan. That was a decade after Iran-Contra. And Bin Laden did not become a terrorist until he founded Al-Qaeda in 1988. And even then, it was a secretive organization which did not carry out any significant attacks for several years. In short, there's a lot of folklore and myth about Osama bin Laden, but he was not funded by the United States and most certainly was not a CIA agent. I know, given the supreme irony, you almost want to believe this for any number of reasons, but as a matter of historical fact, it just doesn't hold any water. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, share, do all that stuff that you usually do for a video you like. And I'll be back again soon with another historical thought. Thanks.